Hello and welcome back to Archaeology 101. I'm not going to be discussing an archaeological period today as there has been an important issue that has just arisen. This year the government have decided to reduce the funding of certain high cost subjects including archaeology in British universities. This will have a massive impact upon the future of our heritage and historic landscapes and I'm going to convey to you how that is going to happen in this video. The government have analysed certain high cost, low impact subjects in university courses and they've deduced that they should give money, perhaps arguably quite rightly, to subjects which will support the NHS like nursing and that is quite admirable. I do have some, a lot of sympathy with that. But they are going to be taking away money from arts, media and for some reason archaeology courses have also been nailed by this as well. And they're going to decrease funding of these subjects by up to 50%. And this is an incredibly dangerous precedent for our historic environment. I will need to contextualise this subject by describing how an archaeologist is made. So archaeologists usually start out by doing three year course, uh, undergraduate course in archaeology, and you can do that from 40 plus institutions across the UK as it currently stands. And you will learn all about archaeology, the history of it, how to conduct it, and how to be a guardian of heritage essentially. Now to learn practical skills, you tend to do a few weeks, only a few weeks, which is not enough in a field school. Quite often you will have to pay for this on top of your uh, loan. They tend not to be included into the cost and that is absolutely outrageous, but that's how things stand currently. Uh, from there you can then become a, a specialist by going on to do a master's or PhD course and you can specialise there and that can be anything from a geneticist, a food archaeologist, zoo archaeologist, it, the list goes on and on. But most people will go to become a commercial archaeologist or an excavator where they'll be conducting rescue archaeology. You are snatching archaeology from being destroyed by a massive digger in front of a construction project such as a, the construction of a supermarket. You're saving archaeology. The developer who is has bought that land is constructing that will fund that and it's not a perfect system. There are a lot of problems with it but it kind of works. You can then if you want to become a specialist work in curation, recording of anything that comes out of that excavation. So you can be a fine specialist, for example, and that will tell us more about that site. But you need to excavate that site first and to excavate that site, you need students to graduate and become archaeologists. And it's becoming harder and harder, especially now with this proposed funding cut to become an archaeologist. And that's going to have some severe impacts upon the socioeconomics of our country and our heritage. So how will this affect us in a post COVID-19 world? So archaeology departments are used to facing, quite sadly, uh, cuts to funding. We're not well funded at all, and this will just make it worse. So there may be department closures completely. There may be swathes of cuts to archaeology departments and to the numbers of students that can do undergraduate archaeology and further studies. This is a number which has been falling since 2008 anyway, with uh, it being a very physically demanding job if you become an excavator. Uh, also, the A-level was scrapped in 2016, meaning it's, there's less initial interest in it to start with. Uh, and having fewer archaeologists excavating uh, will impede the pace of large construction projects like HS2, like the Merseyside project. And of course, there's going to be more uh, when the government will need to jumpstart the economy with large construction projects and they will need archaeologists. And they are shooting themselves in the foot by taking away 
first and foremost excavators and then there's going to be a decrease in the production of the next generation of specialists and these specialists are just as important as the excavators because they can tell us things which are relevant to, to today for example the spanish flu was excavated and then passed on to a microbiologist and they were able to identify the h1n1 virus and that can be very useful in understanding how pandemics happened in the past and how viruses affected us in the past and that information is all relevant to today. I'm going to touch a little bit on the socioeconomics of the heritage sector and why the government should take particular note. So there are about 206,000 jobs involved directly with the heritage sector as of 2020. And then there are the indirect partners like manufacturers who produce merchandise uh, for those heritage sectors as well. So any downturn within that sector has an impact upon manufacturers, for example, as well. It's not just heritage, which will, will be at threat from any particular downturn in funding or whatever. Heritage is very renewable. Uh, you can bring tourists from both within Britain and externally from foreign countries, and people are very interested in coming to see archeological attractions. You can see from 2019, seven of the top 10 attractions were heritage attractions. Those were paid attractions. And I'll go into Stonehenge, for example, which is the sixth on the list. That attracted 1.6 million visitors. And if you've ever been to Stonehenge through the, through the gate, it's about 14 pounds for an adult ticket. And 1.6 million, that's a lot of money coming in. And that's just Stonehenge. That's just one pile of rocks in the field. There are a lot of piles of rocks in the field. And the government should try and educate and maybe gain some economic value from that as well, I guess. But education as well and heritage attractions are very good for the British economy. They are very renewable and they produced about 18.4 billion pounds in 2019, for example. So take note of this British government, as well as being scientific and culturally significant. And we're going to find more of these as the years go on. Well, we're going to get more attractions. You should be capitalizing on this, not squashing the industry in a very, very short sighted move, in my opinion. So what should the British government do in response to this? Well, they should continue to fund archaeology properly because uh, that will ensure the next generation of archaeologists can protect heritage. And it's all part of the Build Back Better stance that they've come out with as well, wherein you need to keep that current infrastructure propped up like historic buildings and monuments. Those all need to have that, that funding there. So there's information which will bring tourism and relevant up to date information will be provided by archeologists to the general public, which will enrich us culturally and economically and scientifically. And then my second argument is that they should actually fund and support archaeological training and skills more, which will aid what I've just said. There is a massive problem with conditions within the commercial sector, which do have an impact on the quality of work being produced. So if you have better training, better conditions, I'm not calling for a massive spending spree, but conditions and training are a key. And if you have those, you will you'll come back with a better product and you'll have really good attractions created because of that. And then I think you should make more apprenticeships as well, which allows for people post 16, maybe even post 18, to work alongside uh, bodies such as Historic England and local planning authorities. And they can learn some amazing skills like geographic information systems, which is a skill very, very relevant within a lot of sectors, and this will help people gain skills and knowledge and better jobs in future. And finally, I kind of touched upon this, but the government just needs to take a better interest within heritage and culture by looking into universities, research bodies and commercial companies and making sure that everyone's healthy and happy and that the work is up to standard and that they've got enough funding for PPE or information boards which will bring in those attractions. We need 
a closer relationship between government and our heritage sector and it's within national interest that this happens. The general public can really help the heritage sector as well. So when lockdown is lifted, you'll be able to go outside and you'll be able to visit these attractions if you have the cash. Of course, I understand that a lot of people have been very negatively impacted by the pandemic and people are really struggling. But maybe some of you out there have secure jobs and you still have that money coming in. Well, Heritage needs you as well. So go and support these uh, charities. I've linked English Heritage, for example, as just one example. There's plenty of other smaller charities you can go to as well. But go visit attractions. Go put a pound in a donation box in a museum. It all helps at the end of the day. And when you've been to these attractions, share those attractions. Put it on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Say why you liked it and show it to your family and friends and say you should go visit, you should go support this, this attraction. And then you can also directly engage with Heritage as well by volunteering. Again, this will depend on when lockdown is over. And I've also linked to Historic England volunteering sector, but you'll be surprised about who, who uh, accepts volunteers. And I highly suggest that you go to your local museum and ask about volunteering because I'm sure they'll be delighted and will actually really need volunteers. Then there's the final point, you can lobby for change as well. And I put a link in here for an open letter to the government to help ensure the protection of archeology span for the future. And you can go sign that if you want. But if you see a heritage attraction under threat, you can go lobby your local council or even go to your MP or then take it above the head and send it to a letter to the House of Commons. But there are things that can be done to help support heritage in the future. And these are just some of the ways that you can as well. I've breezed over this topic. So if there's any more questions, please ask me in the comments. And you can also find other information out there as well. And I'll put the links to some of the sources in the description and they might give you a, a clearer idea of some of the more nuanced issues in archeology span and heritage. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time on Archeology span 101.